a large group of lyrical assassins. It became a cult hit. Kind of rare for that time. And it just blended so well. Nine MCs, different styles. That's why I knew that it was gonna be a problem for other rappers, you know, because everybody had their own individual style. One person laid back, the other hardcore, dirty was crazy. It was just so much. Once I heard Protect Your Neck, I knew I was never going to school again, you know? I mean, Protect Your Neck is definitely one of the greatest songs of all times. I want to ask y'all a question. Who is the number one best set-off MC in the game? Inspector who? Motherfucking right. Number one set off MC in the game, nigga. Who can't clear coming at you? Get this shit. 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 I'm there when the beat is on and rocking, I'm, I'm doing what I gotta do. You know, that's how I protect your neck was born. Smoke on the mic like Smoke with Joe Frazier is just a freestyle. But it's like, I've really felt that. Like, cause I was out there, I felt like I'm untouched and you know, nobody compete with me. We battled each other before on stage. We didn't know we was gonna be Wu-Tang Clan. That's how the birth of all these songs came about, man. When you really think about it, all them songs on that first album was, we went to war with them growing up in life. You know what I mean? Because they're from a different part of town than me. You know what I mean? They're like five minutes away from me. Ghostface Killer being from Stapleton, that's a hard part of town. I'm from Park Hill, Raekwon, Matt, you got we it's a hard part of town. You partied a little different. Our parties was a little rougher, maybe. Even going to school, our neighborhoods was, was just, ah. Uh, just whenever we bump heads, it wasn't like we decided we wanted to form a rap group. They didn't know that this was going to be Wu-Tang Clan, that we're going to see each other like five years later. And then, oh, well, we're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna be this big sensation. Nah. So I'm protect your neck while I say, chill with the feedback. So feedback means beef and fight. I said, chill with the feedback. Black, we don't need that. And he made the right idea, and that's how Protect Your Neck came in. He called those dudes, you want to be down with this? This is the movement right here. We doing this. Wu-Tang this and Wu-Tang that. You're going to have $50. You need $50 for your studio time. And everybody put up that $50. They agreed to it and said, yo, you know this is what I want to do. And from that, when we got together, it was always a friendly competition. All right, what you got? And Ghost would do his, and then, you know, I say mine, and then Memphis say his, and then RZA do his. That's how all these songs came to come about, man. And we record Protect Your Neck, and we have all these records in my apartment, 234 Morningstar Road. All these records there, and on the record, I put my phone number there, so I'm answering calls from record stores and trying to solicit them and sell them and leave them on consignment. And I never forget one day, you know, we packing records, Raekwon is there, Power is there, Ghost is there, Kid Capri is coming on the radio and K Capri on BLS, he plays Protect Your Neck. And I'm telling you, you know, Raekwon, he jumped, his head almost hit the ceiling. He was so excited, yo. And that joy that I saw him on the display right there just filled me. And it was like, we felt like, oh wow. Because Kid Capri is one of the top DJs at the time, right? He just played our record on the radio. It's real now, and we never turned back from that point. Until we first heard our record on the radio, Protect Your Neck, oh, it was over. That first single, Protect Your Neck, when it came out in New York City and when we became a co hit it gave everybody in the crew the chance to believe and to know and accept that this outlet and this path was good for us.